Posey Gloves here and today I'm going to really quick show you how to record audio into FO Studios using two main methods. Here we go. I'm going to re I'm going to explain the best methods and focus on them in other videos that will follow these ones. So you want to record audio. What you do first is you've obviously you've watched the previous video so you know you need an audio interface. You set it up and you go to mic one after having selected the correct driver. You new mute it because you don't want to hear it. Now you want to record that signal right. You've got it coming into FO Studio. You've assigned it right there and that's at the top of every channel strip so you can assign different inputs on different channel strips and now you've noticed that it's already been record enabled something that could be very annoying if you are not aware of it is disc recording auto unarm auto unarm what it does is every time you record it will unarm your thing so if you want to hit spacebar record some and then uh, you hit spacebar it'll unarm and then you meant to get, and then you when you hit spacebar again it won't be recording and you think it's recording it's super annoying so just so you know if you're having that issue that's the auto unarm feature right there okay cool so we've got that now we're going to come in here and we're going to record some audio right but if i hit spacebar no audio is being recorded why is that i must have my master record enable button on you can also just alternatively hit r if your keyboard uh typing keyboard midi keyboard is off cool so now it will record now if you you got to make sure that you have audio enabled for recording so we do and you can also record notes and automation loads of other stuff so now i'm recording and it is silent you might be going where's the audio well this channel path is actually pretty accurate uh the, the signal goes from top to bottom and as you can see here there is a record enable button down here but it is muted up here so it never gets to my record enable button and some mixers it's not always this way sometimes it's a little weird and you have to go look at a diagram to uh, a block diagram to figure it out but anyways we need a way to get it to that stage and i don't want to hear it because i'm being weird and don't want to hear my own voice when i'm recording so i'm going to do that so now it comes through my this channel and goes out to my master channel but i don't hear it so i can freely record if i wanted to hear it i could just turn it off but i have my latency kind of high so it's just a little annoying hearing it well not kind of high i just don't like i just don't like hearing it for this sort of a thing so here we go so now if i record la 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 you see there it is there's my recording if i normalize it whoa check that out a couple other cool modes Modes you should be aware of you have a count off mode that will count off uh, a set amount before I believe it's just like two bars or whatever and then you have an, a MIDI overdub so you can, if you're recording MIDI and you want to add MIDI without erasing your previous MIDI you can use MIDI overdub so you have that option you have loop record so we could set up a loop let's say there's one part that you're maybe your vocalist is having a problem singing you could have them sing it repeatedly just in one big like doom 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 just just pound it out and then you can pick the best takes and so for example if i do that right now it is in loop record and it will just keep looping then it will keep looping and it will keep looping and there you go it's doing it so that's how you do that now that is the first method downsides to this method if you want to do a whole bunch of channels and record them all at the same time you have to do this and then you have to do that it's it's annoying so there's no way to use midi to automatically record enable a bunch of tracks at least as far as i'm aware if someone knows let me know i would really appreciate that but i don't know uh maybe if you create a group i've never tried this let's try it let's just try record group and nope oh if you uh by the way if you left click it it will allow you to name the file before you record it so anyways that does not work so now we have the second method to recording oh one other the good thing about this method is your audio will be in sync over long periods of time uh, the method i'm about to show you uses a lot more memory and as a result sometimes the audio will skip like a sample or so it'll skip something and then i'll find myself because i edit a video a lot with obviously with my voice and i find my audio getting grossly out of sync as it goes down like like completely off like not even close to what i was doing because there's just missing data somewhere over long periods of time so if you're going to be recording audio for a long period of time use the mixer now uh, the next method is edison if you hit shift e it'll open up an edison this is pre-fader so if i turn down my audio here you see that it still comes into edison so i can now record it into edison and it will not be affected by other stuff so if you have it before other effects or whatever it'll also work except that i feel like that one's sort of obvious but anyways 
I can record audio directly into Edison. Now I have it on record on play. So when I hit play, it will record, but I could put it on input input or now we'll not worry about those for now we're just gonna leave it on play if you open up shift e it'll open it up in this state with it linked to your transport so if i record and we're not going to do a loop recording quite yet we're just gonna do a normal recording so we're just going to go like this and now i will record make sure it's not in focus when you do that and it has its own record enable function so you got to make sure that it's been record enabled separately okay so now we record and la 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 cool and what you will notice is that it is linked to my transport so as i move this around it will, oh, you have to unrecord enable it to see this work. And then bang, there it is. You see that little red line? It's linked to my transport. So if you wanna edit audio in here and maybe time stretch or do something cool with it, you can do that. And you can do a whole slew of things. This was made for small sample manipulation, right? It can record longer chunks of audio, but like I just said, you will have issues with it later on. Now, uh, for loop record is also really, really handy dandy because I prefer it much to do it in here. So if I re loop record here and then I hit play and now it is recording, but now it'll put in markers every time we have a song jump, every time it jumps to a new spot in my loop or it just loops, I guess, then it will do this. Now, if I want to audition the best takes, oops, I just lost, there we go. If I want to audition the best takes instead of recording it here, as you see, this is kind of cool. I can like unmute the ones that I want. And if you're wondering why they're muted, it's because I recorded it on a muted track. I'm going to unrecord enable that. But if you want to unmute them, you just hold down alt on the right side. And so basically now if I want to audition them, I can go to my slider tool and simply move them over like so and take the best one and then just chop the rest off. You don't even need to see the rest to do it, but maybe you want a preview of what's coming because maybe you had a killer take somewhere. So now we're going to talk about uh, another thing about Edison, besides the loop record enable function, you can also, if you right click, you can link this to a controller. So for example, I could open up an Edison here, shift E, and I could link this. Uh, I'm going to link to controller. I'm going to link it to a pad on my MIDI controller and FL studios just stopped working. Okay. Well, that's just super. I'm not going to try that again then because I don't want it to stop working on the one I'm recording on. That's why you record in a separate FL. But anyways, you, oh, you'll notice that because it's playing, it started recording immediately, but there's no audio on that track. Now, if you want to open up an Edison that's not doing anything, just a normal Edison, you can hit Control E and it will do that as well. Uh, but anyways, what I was saying is you can link it to a button and then you can use that button to trigger a whole bunch of instances of Edison. So you can record, enable and unrecord, enable a whole bunch of tracks at the same time. However, if you're going to be recording long pieces of audio, that's not such a great idea. And it takes up a, like, I believe it's like five times more memory than this does. So I highly recommend using this for multi-track, even though it is sort of annoying. So again, if you want to be recording audio, I got to be careful where I click because if I click over there, I could stop my recording right now. Uh, if you want to record a bunch of audio and you want to hit your space bar and you, you should just stop playback, but then when you hit space bar, you want it to start up again and just immediately continue recording, you want to make sure again that this... Uh, auto unarm feature is not on. If it is on, you will ha it won't work. You'll have to go through and rearm everything and then hit spacebar. And as soon as you hit spacebar to stop play or to stop recording, it's going to unarm everything. So this could be really good or it could be just a disaster zone. You see in here, we also have uh, auto create auto clip, which is the whole putting the audio directly in your playlist for you. Otherwise, I believe it just goes to your list in your audio clips group. And then another option is, of course, latency compensation and 32-bit float. You may consider turning latency compensation off if you're just tracking uh, and you don't have any plugs. And if you're going to be using something as a send, then it still doesn't matter because a reverb is supposed to be delayed anyways. So that's that. That's recording NFL. I really tried to go as fast as possible, but there, there's just a lot. There's even more options, believe it or not, but those are the main basic methods. And we'll look at particular things about particular methods in the upcoming videos. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day. Colors, when they hear music, people who taste music, all, all these weird things. They talk about people who have perfect pitch but are tone deaf. So they can tell you what note you're singing, but they cannot sing the note themselves. He's even got some things in here about 
singers who try to, with people with perfect pitch, who if you plug their ears and fill it full of white noise.